Tyon Grant Foster is the relentless, fearless leader of this Grand Canyon University team, attacking the basket all the time and drawing fouls. He averages 7.9 free throws attempted per game, which is 6th best among players in the NCAA tournament, and that contributes to his 19.8 points per game, 6 rebounds, 1.7 assists, 1.7 steals, and 1.4 blocks per game. The former Kansas player has looked amazing at GCU and was the Western Athletic Conference Player of the Year, helping lead GCU to an amazing record. He also loves blocking shots as evidenced by his 1.4 blocks per game and knocks down a few threes when his team really needs it. He's a true three-level scorer, also showing off that mid-range, helping out this GCU team to a 29-4 record and a one-on-one -on -one record against Q1 teams with a win against San Diego State, another five seed in this tournament. They're faced up against St. Mary's College in the first round, which is going to be a bit of a challenge for St. Mary's College. They're one of the worst fouling teams in the league, and they're heavily reliant upon their starting five to be successful. This GCO team has a very favorable round one matchup and could be on their way to making a Cinderella run. One of the things they do well is draw a lot of fouls and shoot a lot of free throws. And of course, Tyne Grant Foster leads the way in that regard. This team shoots 25.2 free throws per game and knocks down 18.9 of them, good for 7th most attempts and 4th most makes in the NCAA, and also they shoot 75.2% on those free throws. They're also a very good rebounding team, averaging 38.2 total rebounds per game, that's good for 51st in the nation. They really attack those stats that matter, the gritty stats that can really equalize games against better teams. And they love just making these defensive playmaking plays. They average 8.2 steals per game and 5.3 blocks per game, and just overall have a good field goal defense at 40.5% field goal percentage and 44.5% two point field goal percentage against, good for 17th and 13th in the league. Gabe McLaughlin is the next player up on the docket. He's been knocking down threes in the pick and pop, and he's averaging 13 points, 7.3 rebounds, 1.3 steals, 0.9 blocks and shooting 40.8% from three. He loves knocking it down, catch and shoot off of those pick and pops, and he's also a threat to hit him off of those baseline out of bounds plays. You always have to watch out for McLaughlin coming off a twirl or any sort of action or any other option that opens up McLaughlin for three. Look out for these during the tournaments. Don't expect McLaughlin to only shoot the three. He also likes rolling to the basket and attacking the closeout if the defender is giving him space on the pop. McLaughlin is another contributor to this team's 12th ranked blocks per game statistic as he helps out making chase down blocks or playing straight up defense to set up other players to make blocks. A key feature of Bryce Drew's defense is to play straight up defense and allow one of the other athletes on the team to come in and make a block, such as Grant Foster, McLaughlin, Duke Brennan, Loke Wurr, and Colin Moore. Ray Harrison is the best passer at GCU, averaging 3.9 assists per game, and loving kicking it out to shooters, especially in these last few months, where GCU has upped their 3-point shooting average to 36.8% from 3. For the full season, GCU shot 34.4% from 3, so they're heating up when it matters. And Ray Harrison is another big part of that, he's been knocking down some threes. He only shoots 31% from 3 on the season, but he is a great 3 level scorer regardless. Last season he averaged 17.8 points per game as GCU's leading scorer, but has taken a step back this season as the second option to tie on Grant Foster, and he's only averaging 13.7 points per game this season. But he's doing it, attacking off the dribble, trying to get to the rack, attacking in transition, drawing a lot of fouls, shooting a bunch of free throws, and also finding his shot in the mid-range. Ray Harrison is only a junior and contributes to a pretty old group of guys here at GCU, with four seniors, two juniors, and one sophomore in their seven-man rotation that we will see during the tournament. Older age and more experience is certainly a factor in the upset plays, and GCU checks those boxes with this team. In their upcoming match against St. Mary's College, look for Ray Harrison Jr. attacking Mitchell Saxon in the pick and roll, trying to pick up early fouls on him, and trying to take advantage of the big men with their great rollman and Duke Brennan and their stretch five in Gabe McLaughlin. 
St. Mary's College needs to have a plan of attack at defending Ray Harrison Jr. if they want to survive this game, because if Mitchell Saxon gets into early foul trouble, GCU could quickly take this game over. Colin Moore is the other junior in the rotation for GCU, and he is great at stealing basketball. Watch out for him to get a lot of deflections and on-ball steals, especially if GCU makes a deep run in this tournament. He does a great job on the ball, and he loves helping out as a shot blocker in defense, especially in those trade-up situations that GCU loves to set up all the time. He averages 8.2 points per game and 1.8 steals per game. He only shoots 28.9% from three, which is a bit of a liability, and teams could take advantage of that. But he has shown off some creative skills attacking off the dribble, passing, and that three is looking like it might go in a little bit more in March with the way that GCU is shooting the three right now. Moore will likely start out the game against Marcionis, the larger guard in the St. Mary's College backcourt, and will be looking to make a quite a few defensive plays. If they survive to play against Alabama, he'll likely match up against Mark Sears, and if they play UNC, he'll probably match up against RJ Davis, another player of the year in the ACC. Also, watch out for Colin Moore's great pop of athleticism around the basket. He loves getting high and getting to the rim or using it for a reverse finish, as well as also, you know, blocking some shots. The sophomore Duke Brennan is yet another rim protector in this GCU starting lineup, a lot of the times playing straight up, but also sometimes coming in for the block off of offensive rebounds or in help defense. Brennan draws a lot of gravity as a roll man, getting to the basket and finishing around the rim. He is frequently open due to some great three-point shooters such as Jovan Blackshear, Gabe McLaughlin, and Luke Ware being on the court. Brennan also loves attacking the glass and averages 2.7 offensive rebounds per game, leading this team. His teammate Gabe McLaughlin averages 2.0 himself, and Tyon Grant Foster gets involved, I think he's averaging 1.7 per game. Speaking of Jovan Blackshear, he's shooting 43.3% from three, leading this rotation in three-point percentage, and he is only averaging five points per game, but last season he averaged 10.7 points per game in the 12 total games he played. A very experienced senior guard that knows what he's doing when he's on the court, filling in for Ray Harrison or playing alongside him, he does a great job and is a great backup point guard to contribute to the great guard play of the GCU Antelopes. GCU has some great guard play which is usually a good indication of an NCAA tournament team that can go far in the bracket. But finally we have to talk about GCU six man Loke Wurr, who has been shooting hotter than fish grease since the month of February. He was shooting 46.5% from three since February 1st and he's just been amazing. He looks like he's built for March. The 6'8 senior forward is a great defender, does some great stuff on the ball, blocking shots, rebounding, contributing to help defense, but also blocking shots on the ball. I mean, this man just does so many positive things and is a great six man to replace any person in the starting lineup who's dealing with foul trouble or needs some rest for GCU. He has been making a huge contribution for them in the last two months, averaging 11 points, 4.3 rebounds, 0.9 steals, 1.6 blocks per game in the previous two months, and that's only in 20 minutes per game. He's been amazing and contributes to this great GCU seven-man rotation, which honestly just feels like a high major team due to their athleticism, length, and talent. Although I believe St. Mary's College, Alabama, UNC, and Arizona are great teams, this Western Quadrant seems the most likely to have a double-digit seed in the Elite Eight or even the Final Four, and GCU could very well be that team who pulls off a string of upsets. Even if they don't, it was still a great year for GCU. Anyways, thanks for watching the video. If you haven't, scroll down and hit the like button, hit subscribe yet, and you're still around at the end of the video, maybe go do that and help me out. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.